All right. So this is study number three in the series, Imagine All the People. And we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. Uh, again, that's Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. So again, go ahead and read that. Read it for yourself. Digest it. Read it a couple times. Make any notes, questions, things like that. Be sure to do that before you listen to the rest of this. And then uh, we can dive in. Um, I'm going to read it for us. It's not too long of a passage. It says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So, um, let's basically dive into that, dive into this. Um, it's This is a very interesting passage. I think it's kind of difficult, actually, to kind of understand what is going on. It's talking about abolishing the law and the prophets, and then fulfilling them, and then heaven and earth pass away then all the laws accomplished different things like that so a couple of questions is what does it mean to what is the law and the prophets uh the law and the prophets like i said before um the hebrew bible is called the tanakh and it consists of three parts it's the law the prophets and the writings so when the, jesus says the law of the prophets he's basically just saying the hebrew bible is just a shorthand way of saying all of the hebrew bible um, so that's the law and the prophets and he's saying that he doesn't he doesn't come to abolish them but to fill them so I guess the kind of question is why would people think that he's come to abolish them right and I think it as you read in the Sermon on the Mount it kind of becomes clear because Jesus says you heard it said and then he'll quote the Old Testament or he'll quote some Old Testament law but I say to you and then he kind of says something different and so it actually seems like he's abolishing a lot of laws and putting in new laws. That's what it seems like. So, but Jesus is not doing that. And Jesus wants to make it clear that he's not doing that. That's why he says, hey, don't think that I've come to abolish the laws. And there's different other places in the Bible where he doesn't really obey the Sabbath. He gets rid of like all the kosher laws. He does a lot of things. He actually does technically, I guess, abolish some of the laws some of the old testament laws so how how does that work with this so that's one of the questions uh the next thing is what does it mean to fulfill and this is a pretty key point i think um in the dictionary i think it means to achieve something or complete something so if you can think about um, amazon fulfilling your order right or you fulfilled the requirements for your to, for your degree it means you completed your degree you achieved uh, whatever you needed to do to meet up to it right um so that you are done basically and th i think that makes sense with what jesus says here where he says until heaven and earth pass away not one i or not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished so jesus doesn't hasn't he says he's not come to abolish the law but fulfill or accomplish the law achieve the law so he's actually saying he's going to live up to the law he's going to complete the law and so like we've been saying before all of the old testament points to jesus and jesus is like the fulfillment or the completion of the law and that's basically what jesus is saying he's saying that he's going to do the law he's going to fulfill the law but I don't think it's just that he's going to fulfill the law. I mean, it, does, it just says all is accomplished. It doesn't really say that he himself <laughs> is going to accomplish it and then everything will go away. And I think some people kind of interpret it that way, but it doesn't really actually say that. It just says until all is accomplished. And it even says in verse 20, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So he's not just saying that he himself is going to exceed the righteousness of the, the Pharisees. He's saying 
unless you, I tell you, unless your righteousness. So he wants everyone in the kingdom of heaven, this new kingdom that he's setting out, to accomplish the law, to achieve the law. So he is saying, we got to obey the law. We got to obey all the Old Testament commandments. Not You can't even take out one iota of them. So that's interesting because it kind of pre presents a little bit conundrum if you know some of the other teachings that he had where he's kind of put aside or thrown out some of the commandments. So what's going on there? What's going on? Um, just from this passage, it may be difficult to figure out. But I think what's interesting is that he compares it to the scribes and the Pharisees and he says that their righteousness is not that good actually and later on. In Matthew, Matthew, um, I think chapter what is it, twenty, uh, twenty-three. Matthew chapter twenty-three. He actually lays out that the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees are very poor. Um, he pronounces a lot of woes on them. Says they're very unrighteous, actually. So, for our righteousness to exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, it's not that difficult to do, right? Um, but actually, if you read, as we, and I will get into this in the Sermon on the Mount um, and some of the different texts that we can look at or surrounding it. But Jesus is not saying to fulfill the commandments like just wrote obedience to them. He's saying that the commandments have a specific purpose. The commandments, the law and the prophets, they were given to do something. There's goals behind them. There's wisdom behind them. So we have to look at what were they trying to do. And Jesus is going to complete what they were trying to do. What were they trying to do? They were trying to, like we saw last time in Isaiah chapter 2, create this new society where the law would reign, where there would be justice and peace. And Israel was not that. Israel hadn't been that. Even in Jesus' time, the scribes and the Pharisees, as you look, if you want to look up at Matthew chapter 23, they were not just. They were not peace-loving. They, they oppressed the poor. They, they murdered people even. So they were not what, they did not accomplish the law at all. They might have been following the letter of the law, but they weren't accomplishing any of the purposes behind it. And that is what Jesus means by this passage. He's saying, the new people in the kingdom of heaven are actually going to be the ideal of what the law was trying to achieve. We're going to actually live it out the way it was supposed to be. Not the way the scribes and the Pharisees, which they're just following the letter, doing bare minimum, not only bare minimum, but they're finding loopholes and not caring about the intent of the law of justice and just saying that they've done all the, the rules but living very, um, very terrible lives, actually. Very sinful lives. So uh, I think that that's kind of basically what this passage is saying. So I think that's why he uses the word fulfill instead of just do. If he just wanted you to obey or just do, he would use those words. He uses the word fulfill specifically to get the, the impression that doing but also the impression of completing, which is different. And then secondly, if you look at the uh, previous passage with the salt and light, that's the fulfillment. So from the context, I think this is definitely what he's saying. Also, you know, the commentaries agree with me. So, <laughs> but, um, so Jesus is kind of trying to purposefully include a double meaning because he is poking at the Pharisees. He's poking, poking at the scribes. He wants you to think, hey, what? I can't exceed them. But it's not really in that way. He's, he's purposefully doing a double meaning there because he wants people to think, what? Is that even possible? And then he's like, this is what I really mean by that. And I want you to think, that I'm putting it to you this way because I want you to think deeper about it. So one of the places where this can be really seen is in Jeremiah uh, chapter 31, verse um, 33. 
Oh, well, well, I guess we can go 31 all the way to um, 34. So I'm going to read that one for us. So Jeremiah chapter 31, 31 to 34. It says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel at, after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the law, because they will all know me from the least to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. So you can see from that passage, it's not about following the letter of the law, actually. It, the, the people won't even teach the law anymore. They won't even teach their neighbors to know God because people just know it will be written on their hearts. And that's the, the goal of the law. The law is not about, okay, memorize it, just follow it. No, the goal of the law is to be on their hearts so deep that you don't even remember the words of the law. You're just doing them. You're just naturally living out the law. And so it's the heart of the commandments that need to be embedded in God's people, in the kingdom people. And just lived out. And so people don't even need to teach. They don't even need to learn. They just, they don't need to memorize. They don't need to read the words. Oh, what does this say? What? And, and, and I think this is kind of moving into, um, I guess, the lesson or the how do we live the story out is, uh, do we do that today? We Do we look at the Bible and go, okay, well, I think this word says this and this word says that. So that means you can do this and you cannot do that. Any of that stuff is... This is not what Jesus is talking about. When you're like, hmm, I wonder if this is okay by the Bible. Well, this tech word technically says this and this tech. The, all, once you get to that point, you've lost it. That's not what the Bible is about at all. That's not to say that the Bible's commandments are relaxed, though. Actually, what that does is makes the bar even higher. It makes the bar higher. But again, there's no real bar. It's just about going. It's about going in the right direction, right? Um, so if you can think about an analogy in the study is if you if you had a boss or somebody like that, and he's like, okay, do X, Y, Z. Do these tasks for me. And you do them. That's fine. Whatever, right? That's good. You did your job. But how do you exceed expectations? How do you impress your boss? And that's what Jesus is getting at. He's saying, hey, the laws are the things that God told us to do, but that's not really what it's about. There's, We want to not just meet these things. We want to exceed. We want to do better, right? And if, in order to, to impress your boss, you need to not only just follow what he says, but you need to know his intent behind it and start doing more and say, okay, he wants me to do this. That means... He's actually intending to do these things, so let me go ahead and just do them even before he asks, right? So that's what it means to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Is we're doing even more than what uh, Jesus or God asks. And we'll see that in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says, Hey, if someone asks you to walk one mile, you walk two, right? If someone asks you to give you a coke, you, you give them a cloak also, right? So those type of things, you're just going beyond and just living out goodness and love to the fullest extent that you know how. And even if you don't know how, you try to think about it and find out and imagine how much more love there could be in this world and you go do it. And that's the picture that Jesus is painting for this future kingdom. And that's the calling that he's asking, he's calling his followers to take up. It's not about, oh, should I do this or is this right or wrong? Once we get into that in the Bible, once we start analyzing the text and saying, is this right or wrong? We've gone astray already. It's not about that whatsoever. It's about knowing God's heart, knowing his goals, and just going and doing them and carrying it out. So um, moving into how do we live this out is like, have you ever uh, felt like you're just living a set of rules as a Christian? Has that ever happened? And 
what are the things that made you feel like that? What is the part of the culture that made you feel like that? And, and I have to say this, sometimes in our church, we create that type of culture. And that's our bad. We as Christians, as Christian leaders, need to take responsibility for the fact that we're kind of creating a lot of this rules-based culture. And that's why um, a lot of people in the world know us as just following the rules. Um, and then, like, think about and pray about what is something that we can do in our specific lives to really exceed what God is asking us to go beyond. Is there anything? Um, and we have to kind of use our imagination. We can't just look at the rules of, oh, that's the easy stuff, right? That's like level one. But we have to kind of know the heart and go beyond and think, what, am I, what does my boss really want? And what are the things he can do to needs me to do to accomplish it? And then just go ahead and do it. All right?